I did not plan on making a video today. I came in because it was one of my best friend's birthday and we just planned on having a few beers and hanging out here. But then, as it usually happens for us, we slowly started working on our own projects and I decided to just make this super quick thing for myself. But as I was planning it out, I realized that there's a part of this project that's actually super useful to know and applicable in one way or another in a lot of areas of woodworking. So I changed my mind about filming and here we are. A even less scripted video than my already barely scripted ones. Enjoy! Per usual, my motivation came from me looking at something online that I needed to buy, getting absolutely appalled by the price, and then deciding to make it myself for way cheaper. And in this case, I could actually make it in less time than it would take Amazon to deliver. So I grabbed one of the many scrap pieces of wood that we have, and I cut it into strips. I needed six pieces for this. Four of them long, because they are going to serve as the legs, and then two of them shorter because they're going to serve as the cross between those legs and be the base for the planter. The planter I want to put on this is 12 inches wide. So I made those middle strips 13 inches because I just wanted to make sure that I have enough space. Next, I cut those same strips again because I only eyeballed the width the first time I cut them and they ended up looking way too thick, so I had to slim them down. This is why we say measure twice, cut once, not measure zero times. But it's fine, no harm done, only took an extra minute to fix. When I finished cutting, I had these six strips and I was going to assemble them in two parts, like this, with two long pieces on each side and a short piece connected them in the middle. Kind of like a capital H. This is where the precision comes in and why I wanted to make this video. During my past builds, I managed to wing my cuts and get away with adding a lot of glue and then just clamping everything together super tightly and hoping it hides my mistakes. And it usually does. But for something this delicate, it's not as easy to pull that off without having it be super obvious. If I don't drill the holes where this middle attaches correctly, it will end up being uneven. And not only will there be an obvious gap there, but the plant itself will then be slanted when it sits on the stand. And the joint won't be strong enough to support the weight because the surface won't be properly glued. I have to make sure that when I drill the holes that they are identically placed on each leg and on the base strips. There's no way to just eyeball this, trust me. When you first start, you'll convince yourself that you can just do it freehand, but your brain is a liar. You want to create a jig. It's an extra step, but these things will be your best friend and it'll make such a difference in a final product. To do this, I'll use a scrap piece of wood and I'll measure out the thickness of the plywood, because that's the size of the indent that I need. In my case, it's three quarters of an inch. Then, to be extra safe, I clamp the guides on each side, that way I'm physically not able to cut a bigger piece than I need. This part isn't as necessary when you're only making one, but it's pretty important later when I'll need to cut two identical pieces, so I'm just gonna get used to the setup right now. Then, when I know that my setup is ready to go, I can start cutting. And one thing I want to point out that I did here is make sure to never turn on the radial arm saw without having your hand on it first because it can kick back towards you when the blade starts spinning. I know mine won't do this because it's not oiled well enough to just move back on its own, but it's still not something that I should be doing, so I should practice what I preach. Then I just slowly move my piece from one side of my guide to the other until I cut out the groove that I wanted. And then the last thing was to grab some oak dowels and then drill a hole in the center of the groove on my jig that's big enough for the dowel to fit. And this is how it looks in the end. I can fit the dowel in, there's enough room for the glue to also get in, 
and when I put the jig on top of the strips, I know that every time I drill through that hole that it will hit the exact spot every single time. Now I just have to make sure that the strips are lined up exactly. I measure out how high I want the cross section to sit on the legs, I draw a straight line across, and then I can line up my jig with the line that I drew, and then just drill there. To add another layer of security, after I drilled the first hole, I made sure that it's the right depth, and then I put some tape around the drill bit so that I know exactly where my stopping point is for each piece. That way, there are no inconsistencies. I'm going to have the same depth for every single part. And because the cross section strips are made out of the same plywood and are therefore the same thickness, I was able to use the same jig to drill identical holes on the sides. This is what I was left with. With all the holes lining up, and then when I put the dowels in, all the dowels fit at exactly the right depth. There's one more thing that I have to do before I can glue everything together, and that's cut grooves in the cross sections so that they can fit into each other nicely. This is where the setup for the radial arm saw came in handy, because I could measure out where the center was and the size of the groove that I wanted, and then I could just clamp my guides on the right spots, and after that stick my piece in there and cut without ever having to worry about moving one of them a little bit too much and cutting more than I should. With this setup, the pieces will be exactly the same, so as long as one of the measurements is right, they will both be right. Now I have everything cut, prepped and ready to glue. I tried to stand the whole thing up before gluing just to see how it looks, but that was not working out for me. It didn't want to stand and I didn't think it was worth trying to tape the whole thing beforehand because that wouldn't really show me if everything was lining up like it should. So I decided it was time to go for it and just prep everything for gluing. From here on out, I think it's pretty straightforward. You kind of clamp loosely, check that all the angles are 90 degrees, adjust if they're not, and then just clamp it tighter. The jig was really the main part of this whole video here, and I think that it did its job. You'll see in a second how nicely everything works out, which is pretty not standard for my videos. Usually at this point, I have to readjust and fix my mistakes. Okay, now to go off topic a bit. At the time of filming this video, my channel was finally approved for monetization. This is super exciting because whether or not it shows, I've been working really hard on this content, so reaching these milestones that show that someone out there is actually getting something out of what I'm doing is really encouraging and it makes me really happy that others seem to enjoy this thing that I'm putting effort into. So thank you so much for all of the support so far, whether your support comes in a form of encouraging comments, constructive criticism, or even just a silent view. It means more to me than I can properly vocalize, so I'm just going to say thank you. This milestone was also exciting because that means that I can finally start getting a cut of the money that YouTube already makes off of the ads that they put on my videos, so that's pretty neat. While I never started this channel so that I could make it my full income, I think it's always encouraging when you can make some side money off of something that you consider to be a passion. So because of this milestone, I figured it would be a good time to start slipping into the vision that I had for this channel before I ever knew whether or not it would actually get any views. I want to use some of the revenue that I get from this to donate to charities that I care about. And I know that it will start off super small first, but I'm hoping that it will eventually snowball into something that might end up making a difference. You hear that, Mr. Beast? I'm coming for your brand. But the way that I want to do this first round is I picked the World Wildlife Fund to be my first charity. And I had to record this like four times. I don't know why I had such a hard time saying that name. I picked them because... I'm a tree hugger. I just am. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just a fact. And I guess I also felt like this is somewhat related to the channel because they deal a lot with forest preservation and this is a woodworking channel. 
it made sense at a time. Just go with it. So the way I'll do this is I'll donate a base of $100 to them. And then for every like and dislike I get on this video, I'll add a dollar. Usually I get between 100 to 200 likes per video. So I'm assuming it'll be in that ballpark again. And I decided to do both likes and dislikes because... I don't want anybody giving anything that they are not comfortable giving, and that includes approval. So if you're watching my videos and you really, really hate them, but you still want to support the cause, then that's fine. No hard feelings. Just click that dislike button and I'll still throw a dollar in there for you. And if you've been watching me for a while, you may have noticed that I never asked before to like and subscribe to my channel. And that's because I figured if you did manage to find me, then you probably know how YouTube works. So if you wanted to like and subscribe, you know how that works. Me screaming it at you from across the screen isn't really going to serve a purpose. But for this one occasion, this one time, I'll break my own rule because more interactions on this means more views, which means I can earn more and then I can donate more. After posting, I'll give this video time to reach its peak views which is usually a month or so after posting. And then after that, I'll add everything up and make my donation. I'll try to be as transparent as possible so that you guys know that I actually made the donation I promised. I'll probably do that in a form of a clip at the end of one of my following videos. I'll see what makes sense in a moment. I haven't really thought out the process of showing the receipts. That's the format that I plan on starting out with. And then I'll see how it goes from there. If this ends up working, I plan on posting polls with different options and then seeing what you guys care about and then picking the highest voted one from there. Okay, that's enough of a tangent. Back to the actual video. I kind of talked through all of the basic steps because there wasn't really much to say about the process. It was very uneventful, which is exactly what we wanted. That means that the jig did its job. For the last step, I just dug out the paint that I had lying around on the shelves that I thought would go really well with my place. I painted the whole thing, and now we can see how it looks. I like it because it has two heights. So if I need it to be lower, I can just flip it around. And because I took the extra time to measure everything out before drilling, it's not wobbly, which is something that would have definitely been an issue had I just eyeballed the holes. This whole thing was just a process for making a very simple jig. But once you get a feel for how these things work, you can start making more advanced ones for more complicated cuts, and it will really help level up your woodworking. Just give it a try. I do plan on doing more videos like this in the future, just because this jig setup is really important, and sometimes it's actually more time consuming than the actual cut. In a lot of occasions, you can spend more time setting up and then once you have everything ready to go, just blowing through it and cutting and gluing everything is really straightforward. So I think it's worth spending the extra time to get this right. Even though, again, I don't practice what I preach and sometimes I just eyeball things when I really should be setting them up better. But that's it for today. Thank you so, so much for watching and for all of your support so far. Let me know what you think about everything down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.